In today's video, we're going to be checking out the reworked Paladin class and Hardcore Challenge on Turtle WoW. The addition of Holy Strike and Crusader Strike seems very promising, so let's test this out during your leveling. Enjoy the video. Oh my god, boys, it's so exciting that actually in Hardcore, you really can actually rely on people. Look at this, there are some non-Hardcore people in here. 11-8 Mage that want to kill this big bad boy, and yeah, the other people just pretty much... Uh, say that we our group can help them and their group can help us everybody's happy and it's great well, there's another paladin in here we're still alive hardcore let's get him we've almost got like a raid for this bad boy okay it seems that they pulled him but it's no problem we can kill both of the spawns and everybody's happy now one group is ready good work amazing <laughs> oh my god this guy looks like a very very cool guy I'm gonna actually add him to my friend list. Actually, the atmosphere, the people, the social uh, stuff in to on Turtle Wow is just simply amazing. I love it. And now we get a very big upgrade with one strength, one spirit. Great stuff. Let's also apply the Wraith Weightstone on it. And our damage went increasingly high thanks and good luck as well all right ladies and gentlemen i actually guess that we should finish up the old iceberg now because it's mandatory for our progression actually with the holy strike our burst will go crazy up and it's going to be fantastic leveling as a uh, paladin at least it should be uh considering the description of the spell but we'll see we'll see Okay, boys, it seems that there's level 7 little gnome that really wants to help me. So, let's go and check it out, how it's gonna go. Okay, it should be alright. It doesn't deal, like, crazy amounts of damage. He does a little bit, but I should be fine even without healing. Yes, perfect. Thank you very much. He was amazing. I know that he doesn't need it, but I'm gonna buff him anyway. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna get finally our amazing spell for a paladin. And I think I'm gonna go back for Elven Forge for just a little bit. Oh yeah, that's a very nice upgrade, especially that I don't really have a chest one, a strength one, stamina. I'll take it all day. Love it, bro. Oh, that's a cool looking maze from this quest and lots of XP, like 1100. But yeah, the looks of this maze, simply amazing. 7 point. 7.5 DPS, it's actually a lot better than my mace. If I just, if I would just have a shield, that would be actually pretty good. I'm gonna keep it for now. Okay, the Dawn Shield Mace was added to your collection, which is great. Pacing Light, the Holy Strike, finally, guys. Oh my god, it's gonna be such a nice upgrade, I think. Oh, it's the next melee, actually. Inflicting 6 to 8 additional damage on your next attack. All damage caused is considered holy damage. Yeah, but this is like the big part. Uh, the holy damage it deals, actually. And the rank 2 is on level 12. So it's going to be like even higher damage increase, which is nice. Okay, guys, this should be level 12 finally. Okay, perfect. Kill Mango Claw. So you're gonna get another nice weapon and another some kind of elite to kill, it seems. Uh, but he's already dead. It's not an elite. So that's even it should be easier. Well I just need to wait for his respawn. Alright boys, that was quite a trip. We finally managed to get to Thalsamar and just, you know, turn in some quests, grab some more. But, you know, the thing is, while while creating this paladin, uh, I went for Dwarf, just, you know, for some more variety uh, on Alliance side. And <laughs> I didn't actually think about how much walking or running around they have in Dunmarok. I mean, everything is like twice far away than like in case of humans for example so <laughs> even night elves i think uh, but it seems for me that it seems to me that the Moroc is like the slowest one and there's just everywhere is so far away all the quests and stuff like that. even getting to felsamar just takes so long and i still didn't get all the quests in here so <laughs> we did make a lot of running but i hope 
that is going to pay you very nicely when we later on go into the human zones, you know, Ellen Forest. Maybe not Ellen Forest already. Um, but, you know, Westfall, uh, Red Ridge and stuff like that. So I have the hopes up. And yeah, let's get the things done. Right, boys, we've got plenty of trucks to kill in here. But first, let's check out how does the Holy Strike work. Oh, nice. That's a quite a big burst. I mean, it's like almost half of its HP in like, you know, initial damage. And you can just only use Crusader Strike, you know, just to finish off the enemies. At least I think that should work like that. Because Crusader Strike does not really deal as much damage as you really wanted to. Um, and it costs quite a lot of mana, so it's just not mana is just mana and efficient to use it constantly. But I can use like one stack, you know, just for just to start attacking and increase that holy damage just a little bit. It's not gonna work like wonders or anything like that, but it does help. The one thing that I really hate about paladins is that fighting the ranged enemies is a really really tough stuff because you can actually you have to pull them away and it's hard when they are constantly you know attacking you from afar let's just use the potion there's no time for healing there's plenty of duos in here it's not gonna be so, that easy and yeah i have eventually chosen the paladin because with those changes that I read, because I missed them actually, when I first chose my character, I did miss the Paladin changes, didn't read them uh, that much. Uh, so yeah, it just, you know, that change with the Holy Strike and some changes to the prop tree later on, it actually make uh, DPS, I mean, probably we will, will not top damage, it's not gonna be uh, that case, uh, but you know, it should be viable at this point and on top of that you know the protection changes also make it make it uh just simply more fun and we can probably will be able to do more things with it i mean you know like things like aoe leveling uh very very nice viable tanking uh even you know higher level stuff so it's really promising and i like that idea so uh let's see how it's gonna go also on top of that in classic era you can have such cool things like uh, shockadins in pvp for example which is a great character character not that great steady damage but you know when you start bursting stuff also guys for anybody starting out on paladin i did make pretty nice um macro uh, just to make my life easier so that after judgment I don't really have to reapply seal of righteousness it just pretty much does it automatically you just need to spam it for a second it's as simple as that you just uh, put cast judgment and cast seal of righteousness then you know judgment is of the global cooldown uh, so it can actually cast judgment first and then instantly reapply now uh, the seal of righteousness and on top of that judgment is first in line so it's always gonna judgment first and then uh reapply the seal of righteousness so we got a very very nice damage uh, burst damage you know our initial entry uh, does feel good and on top of that we can actually use those abilities once again but it's nice because over the course of the fight our mana starts to regen and it just you know more efficient to level up like that and then we can have actually some resources uh, to spend on healing which basically can keep us in fight for longer periods of time and i still have rank two of this spell available uh, but unfortunately didn't have time to get it yet let's do this lone scout also, in considering build for this guy, I actually decided to not go for the retribution because, you know, like initial talents are so much, like initial talents are so useless. I mean, look at this. You got uh, like benediction, which basically reduces the mana uh, of your judgments and seals, which are not that big, actually. Of course, 
you know, 50% is not that significant. Maybe later on uh, it actually does, but, you know, at this point it just doesn't matter that much. Uh, later on you got decreased that judgment um, cooldown, but as you can see from the playstyle, we are actually more into using it once in combat and not more, so it's not a big deal. And actually, in Holy Tree, we got so nice addition. I mean, one the first uh, useful talent we get is Conviction, that can really, really improve our performance. And it's pretty far, you know, you need to have level 20, uh, which is pretty big. And then again, when you even get Conviction, you don't really have that great things. I mean, you get Blessing of Night of Kings, you could Blessing of Justice, which uh, has a little bit more potential, like mobility stuff and things like that, but later on, you know, also improve Retribution Hour. The very first, like, big upgrades get on level 30, when you get your Seal of Command, your to handle Weapon Specialization, Satisfied Command, stuff like that, you know, Vengeance later on, and uh, Repentance on level 40 is not that important, but in Holy Tree, actually, uh, we get very nice upgrades right off the bat, and that actually means that we get improved, increases, increased strength by 10% on the first five levels, which is pretty big. And later on, we get improved Seal of Righteousness, which is pretty powerful on early levels. Uh, so definitely it's a seal that you will be using until level 20, uh, 30, sorry. So... That's something to consider, actually, um, because the damage will be quite significant, the damage increase. And on level, after level 20, actually, we also get, like, Healing Light, which can increase our healing overall. So, you know, leveling will smooth out even more. And we got Sensity Aura, which basically increases our whole damage by 10%, which means more damage from Holy Strike and from Judgment and Seal of the Righteousness. So, you know, like overall damage boosts while on Retribution, we rather get some, you know, not that significant improvements that doesn't really uh, increase our damage at all. So, and on top of that, it's a great thing to have because I will have to do a respec, of course, after this, probably. Uh, we're going to see. Maybe not. It depends on how well it's going to go. Uh, but, you know, the good thing is that you can stay with this build until level 30. Until it's going to get uh, a little bit useless uh, back then. You know, the rest of the talents over here are not really helping us that much. Um, so... Yeah, level 20, uh, level 25, something like that. But uh, later on, you can just, you know, respec and start getting some other stuff because on level 30, you get cool stuff already on both uh, level, on both in protection and retribution. In protection, you get holy shield and retribution, you get seal of command. So it's up to you uh, then to decide which spec you actually want to play and which will be better for your needs. So... It's a very, very con cool concept, and if you really don't really, if you really uh, don't want to respec, you can actually stay with it. Just you know, grab the stuff you need from this talent tree. Uh, for example, you can go until level twenty in holy, grab those two things, and then go for red tree for the like more quality of life things, and it still will be good. So that's something cool to consider okay i need to actually run away in here i just wanted to get to this freaking silver leaf but the trogs have different plans for me <laughs> so i'm just gonna let go i mean my last death uh was actually did learn me a lesson and on top of that i did start as a human paladin at first and i got to level 10 as well <laughs> but i got killed by some rogue uh, some orc rogue in Elwyn Forest because I was running with the war mode on and I still do on this paladin uh, but you know Elwyn Forest was a uh, kind of dangerous place there's so many people over there and you know Dumeroy is uh, another thing that is more peaceful and stuff like that so that's why I decided to take it and probably I'm gonna do a couple of quests like level f until level 14 and 15 we're gonna see how it's gonna go and then I'll probably go to Elwyn Forest um, and cancel the war mode. And from there, continue leveling more safely, let's say. 
Okay, level 15 is actually pretty dangerous in here, uh, so I guess I'm gonna pass on it for now. Uh, gonna do some uh, Felsamar blood sausages and tunnel rat air. And there's also, I think, yeah, miner's gear. This should be doable as well. Because it's pretty much the same play as rat catching, so, or maybe not. Yeah, it is, the, so there shouldn't be like high level mobs around it, so. Should be doable on our level, but we're gonna see, we're gonna see. Um, now, this ram looks epic. Look at its glow. That's nice. But I never really liked, um, the rams as mounts that much. But yeah, I guess it's just a personal preference. I think that later on, on high levels, when you actually get Hammer of the Wrath, your finisher, you can smooth out the rotation even more and always have something to click. You know, you start out with Holy Strike Judgment and then just uh, finish off your enemy with the Hammer of... with some auto attacks and then with the Hammer of Wrath. So, uh, this kind of playstyle seemed kind of promising, but we're going to see how it's going to go. Oh my god, the, those freaking scouts are so annoying. And I actually ran into another lurker, which is pretty amazing. I wonder if he's gonna leave me alone. Oh, lesser healing potion, that's a big, big threat half. Ooh, nice, level 13 while killing some tunnel rats and gathering their airs. But we're gonna get some nice strength increase so let's see yeah damage went up so that's what our what we are looking for actually oh my god so many graveyards in here what the hell has happened i mean this camp is actually pretty dense but level 14 is 15 dies in here so that's pretty strange oh my god they're coming they're running so annoying always keep the judgment for the final hit so they don't run away okay i actually think i will need to enter which is kind of scary but yeah let's go and see what happens i mean <laughs> this place should be named like um silver's train graveyard not mine oh my god so many deaths he sunders my armor Okay, the judgment didn't help in this case because they have too much HP. Geomancer. Okay, got some equipment in here and I think there should be one down over there. And honestly, if I don't really have to, I wouldn't really want to venture more into the mine. Especially with so many geomancers over there that can smash my face with fireballs. I don't overlevel this place or anything like that, so it's just better uh, to play a safe card. Okay, nice, perfect. Due to the fast respawns, we can actually grab this. Uh, there's a patrolling guy as well, but we're gonna kill him just in the meantime. But we're gonna hide in this little cove. And wait for the other gear to respawn and now we should be good to go. Okay, we've got everything. It seems that Memento has also come to check the graveyard. Not to do the quests, but yeah. You can see overleveling people all over the place. I mean, there's a very, very big difference when you are fighting like level, uh, on average, level uh, at your level and with the monsters like above you even one level above is such a big difference you get your damage reduced uh, you also get reduced hit rating you know they have more dodge and stuff like that so it's getting really really ridiculously hard over then so as long as you're killing like three levels below it's fine you still do get uh average amount of xp and you don't make things you know, utterly difficult. Ooh, we got peanut shield and a nice weapon as a dawn shield mace. So, uh, let's check out how it's gonna go with this. Unfortunately, I don't have any weapon skills. So this can be pretty difficult at the, in the beginning. Finally, bro, three on three on all items. I mean, the, <laughs> the freaking 
quest drop items is so bad. I mean, this is not really a quest drop because those items are actually normal items. <laughs> and I really remember all those quests from Vanilla, uh, which basically <laughs> have to be forbidden, abandoned, or, you know, remade because you <laughs> sold all your quest items by accident. I mean, there was no, of course, trash items, only normal ones, but anyway, you know, usually when you actually <laughs> try to sell things quickly, you don't really look what you're selling, and then you go, oh my god, I just deleted all my XP. Okay, boys, it seems that we cannot do that much in Lockmadan anymore, because, you know, all the quests are too high level, so we're gonna go for the human zones, just qu quickly do some quests in Westfall, maybe Red Ridge, and then come back to Lockmadan once again, but let's check Ironforge and Ironforge Edgefields, oh my god, let's check this out, I mean, I don't really see any quests to be in here, uh, this is here, but this is probably from Nomragan, uh, but I guess... In here, we don't see nothing on the map, so I'm curious why why we can expect actually on the airfields. There's like a straight fly point. Maybe I'm blind, but I really didn't didn't see like the feature it featured. You know, the airport featured in Turtle Wow site. But let's see, let's see. Ironforge airfields. I mean, I do remember that in Warcraft 3, dwarves were actually pretty uh, nice inventors. Oh my god, there's like a absolute, absolutely new building in here. There's like a big cannon right off the hills of the mountains. That's pretty amazing. Unfortunately, it's closed and we cannot actually climb ladders uh, in Warcraft, so... <laughs> We don't get actually to see that much. Uh, the bunker still stays the same, it seems. Uh, we can actually jump down and then uh, we can get to straight up to Dun, Moro uh, the Dun Agrath and Hawk's Vigil. But this is actually level 20 plus, so we'll definitely go in there later on. It seems that we've got another explorer, Malu, to see what is happening in here. Maybe not, he already fly away. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna really explore that much. It doesn't seem that we have any quests in here or anything like that, but you know, just a nice addition that you can fr freely explore it. What I really think is that in Classic WoW, they actually wanted to doors be influenced quite a lot by the, you know, aircrafts and stuff like that. Uh, although it didn't really fit the game that much because how could they do that? Uh, and there's like entrance from Ironforge side, of course, uh, to the airport. So it was just an, another unfinished uh, thought business or whatever you call it by Blizzard. So and there's also like plenty of caves and stuff like that. So it's really strange that they didn't even make it like leveling uh, zone because I do realize that other maps like uh, this place or the same goes in uh, Terrors for Glades that of course is made from like uh, new quests in here uh, but you know my uh, my point is that those uh, things were actually empty uh, and those are completely custom but the airport has been actually pretty well made and they didn't use it like until a cataclysm so it's really strange to me that they didn't finish what has been already finished they just needed to add some quests and stuff like that but you know some extra layers but it is what it is in times of classic wow you were actually using some other ways uh, to get to there because of course you could that was pretty funny because it was a very nice shortcut uh, to wetlands, if you knew about it. Term of Divinity. I have to do the resurrection quest, but I think I'm not really in a mood to do that now, so I'm just going to grab it. We'll see what we're going to do, but probably not going to waste another long trip over Domora to actually get it. It can at least wait. Anyway, we're playing the... We're playing hardcore, so it doesn't really matter that much. We don't really need the resurrection because we're not going to use it. <laughs> we can't actually party with other people. Maybe you could actually f resurrect like people from the normal mode. 
you know, just some random lad in the op in the in the jungle or stuff like that. But then again, it's not really worth it, I guess. I'm just gonna do that later on, you know, just along the way. Maybe I will do the one from the Stormwind because it will be along the way to Red Ridge anyway. So this could be convenient and a little bit more time, uh, lesser, lesser time investments, let's say. Why do I see all those people? I am only looking for herbs and they indicate me some strange people. And I don't really know why. A deep run tram adventure. I can't really remember when did I run it last time and Nessie 62 beast. That was so epic when you actually saw her for the first time. I did spend a lot of time actually with my uh, brother trying to get into that water <laughs> level 60, but of course no use. But I think I heard some um, cases of actually killing her and dropping nothing, so... Right boys, so now quickly I need to get to level 14 uh, just by Stormwind quests and then uh, quickly get uh, off my PvP mode uh, just in case. You know, Westfall and Elven Forest is pretty much swarmed by some horde players, so it's better not push your luck. Especially that I pretty much uh, made it to the level. I also got on my warrior and 1200 XP, pretty nice level 14, lovely 10, 10% more strength is actually pretty good. Alright lads and lasses, that will be it for today, uh, thank you for joining me on my Venaris the Paladin, Dwarf Paladin, and I'm pretty happy that we finally managed to get to a point where we finished uh, before with my warrior and I died actually. Uh, so uh, we're almost there but on the alliance side and yeah if you really like the video uh, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so do not miss out any future episodes of this part of playthrough now for today i thank you again and i'll see you next time bye bye